Saints that are in the room, to the saints that uh, couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Last week we uh, last week we uh, what did we do? We left off on uh, Numbers 14, and we talked about how the Most High God He responded to our people in the wilderness when we rebelled against Him. Right? And then, after rebelling against them multiple times, we went up to uh, see the land. We sent 12 leaders of our people, of all the tribes, to go see the land. Right? Of course, excluding the Levites. Um, they went to go look out the land, see, you know, scope it out, see what we could deal with, see what's going to happen. They came back with an evil report, the Bible calls it. Right? So we look at it as an evil report because that's how the Bible judges it already. But if we look at it logically and we look at what they did... They came back a report based off of what they saw. Right? They, they went there. They saw great land. They came back and said, hey, the land looked good. Milk and honey. Just like the most high God said it would be. Then they came back and they said, but there's some scary dudes over there. And I don't think we can take them. They're bigger than us. And they're more than us. All right? So they came back with a report. We would look at it. That's an accurate assessment. Right? That was an accurate assessment. The only caveat to it is most high God said that he is going to take you through the land. So the Most High God was unimpressed with their report because they said, we ain't going to be able to do it. Right? It discouraged the people. The people got mad at it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why even bring us all the way out here just to kill us, Lord? Right? We'd be better off if we died in Egypt. In fact, we'd be better off if we died in the wilderness. Most High God came back and said, okay, we'll make it just like that. All y'all but's going to die in the wilderness. Everybody who was numbered. All right? From 20 years old and up, everybody who was numbered, y'all going to die right here in the wilderness. And your kids, who you thought would end up dying in the wilderness or dying in war, they're going to be the ones that inherit the land. All right? So he told them 40 years, over the span of 40 years, he's going to kill off all the people that were numbered. Okay? So now we want to try to pick it up. And we think about that rebellion. We're going to go right in. We're going to skip a chapter. Uh, uh, next will be chapter 15. Chapter 15, talk a little bit about sacrifices. But I got something coming up about sacrifices. We're going to kind of break down all of them. Um, so we're going to go to 16. It's chapter 16. This is uh, Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. It's Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Right? So there's 250 people. Go to that first verse one more time for me. Now Kohath, the son I of mean, Luke. now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi. The son of who? Levi. So now Korah was what? A Levite. Of what, of what uh, clan? Kohath. He is a Kohathite. What do we remember about the Kohathites? The Kohathites. Remember, you got Levites. Let me get my pen. Levi. You know what I'm saying? You got Levi. Kohath. Oh, I'm going to spell it right. <coughs> All right, so you got Levi, and then Levi splits up into three different clans. Right? One of them, Kohath. What's it like that? And then you have Gershom. Gershom. And then you have who? Marari, right? Marari. Uh, I think that's a hard spell. Something like that. Right? So you have Marari, Koa, and then Gershon. Right? 
These are three tribes. Out of Koath, I mean clans. Three clans. Yeah. Out of Koath, you have the sons of Aaron. Yeah. Right? The sons of Aaron are all the priesthood. Right? But technically they're Koathites. But only if you're a son of Aaron of the Koathites are you allowed to do um, the priestly, the priesthood dudes. Then you have Morari, Gershom, and the rest of the Koathites who have their own duties as Levites. Koathites would uh, be responsible for breaking down the uh, artifacts within the temple, right? So everything within the temple, the the, the, the the stuff that's in the most holy of holies, the the Ark of the Covenant, the candlesticks, the table, the showbread, all that, that would be Kohathites. They break it down, they carry it, they handle it. If Morari touched it, he in trouble. If Gershom touched it, he in trouble. can only be the Kohathites, right? But they are Levites, not priests. All right, very important that we remember that. So Korah is the one who's leading this charge. He is a Levite. He is a Kohathite, just like Aaron is, just like Aaron's sons. So that help you understand where he's coming from about what we're about to read. From his point of view, I ain't too different from Moses. They're like first cousins. Right? You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm not too different from Moses. I'm not too different from Aaron. Who are we talking about, Korah? Korah. You know what I'm saying? I know these people. Right? Now, if you're looking at what the Most High God set up, he's looking at, this is very specific. I don't care how close you are. I'm talking about something very specific. So it helps us get the detail that God has. Let's watch this. Let's look at it. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Right? So then he brought up 250 princes. Princes means what? Rulers. Rulers. So there's 250 men who ruled something of the congregation, right? All of them is famous. All of them is like hard body. All of them like, yeah, he about that. Right? When they say men of renown, it's not talking about, oh, he's very smart. No, it means they, they can scrap. It. Right? It's talking about, man, if you, you put them out in front of somebody, they get right on down with them is what they're trying to say. So men of renown, let's see. Valiant men. Valiant, right? They ain't scary. I ain't no coward. Right? Let's do it. All right, so then, so with they, in other words, they brought some boys with them. You know what I'm saying? So Cora coming up here, and he brought some boys. Just trans. I didn't want to translate. Cora brought. Cora got a dispute, and he brought some boys with him. Let's see. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, "Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Uh huh. Why then lift you up?" yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Right? So he goes to Moses and he goes to Aaron and he says, oh, y'all take a little bit too much on yourself. Right? In other words, you think too much of yourself. You know what I'm saying? Y'all doing all the work. Y'all are the only ones that can do the priesthood. You the only one that can talk to God and that can give the commandments. He's like, no, no, no. Y'all take a little bit too much on yourself. Right? He said, everybody is holy. Read the part again. Watch this. Seeing what is all, that, verse 3? Yeah. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy. He every said, one of them. You take too much upon you, all the congregation is holy. Every one of them. Right? Who else? I mean, what else? And the Lord is among them. Why then lift you up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? Right? He said we are holy and the Lord is amongst all of us. Why are y'all placed so high? And he didn't say God placed you. He said why do you lift yourself up? Why do y'all make it seem like y'all better than all us? That y'all can do more than all of us. Right? So he, can, he had a dispute. He looked at it. He was like, I'm equal. I'm no different from y'all. Why do why y'all get the privilege of being able to Rattle off the commandments and do the priesthood and the sacrifice. Why I can't do it? I'm a Kohathite. These men are now. These some bad boys here. Why we can't do it? All right. Grab um. Grab uh. Exodus chapter thirty-two for me. Play a little flashback just so we remember. It's important that we know how we even got here. Why did we get here? This is Exodus chapter thirty-two, verse one. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, 
make us gods which shall go before us. Mm -hmm. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Right? Remember, why Why would they, I mean, we look at it now, we can just say, oh, those stupid Israelites, right? Stupid Israelites had, had little faith. We can easily just make that assessment now. And not saying that's true, right? They did have little faith, right? But what, what, what contributes to those temptations to not have faith in those moments? Right? Why? Why is it that Moses was going? They just been like, uh, we don't know what happened to Moses. Make us a god. Why? How did that happen? How did we get there? Well, Moses was going for forty days and forty nights. The man went up there for forty days and forty nights. And he's not like he said, "Hey, y'all, I'm gonna be going for forty days, forty nights. Wait for me." They was in the middle of hearing commandments. I mean, let's just make sure we lay it out and put it all in perspective. This is how it went. Most high God came. Told Moses, prepare all the people. Tomorrow, y'all gonna hear from the Most High God. He gonna speak from this mountain. Next day, all the people gather around the mountain. They're like, man, we about to hear God speak. It's real scary. Thunder, lightning. You know what I'm saying? Feel like, feel like, feel like this whole thing, this whole mountain about to erupt, turn into a volcano. Right? Okay. We shaking our boots, but we all right with this. Then all of a sudden, you start hearing this voice coming out of the mountain. Right? When the voice comes, everything got way worse. Everything got way worse. Feel like we about to die. But we stick it out for the first commandment. Stick it out for the second commandment. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight, nine. We hear that tenth. Once he get done with that tenth, we like, listen. I don't know if we can make it past this next one. I feel like this whole thing about to explode if he keep talking. Right? This whole time, you know what I'm saying? We've been, we've been through Egypt. We've been in part of the wilderness. This whole time, we ain't heard from God. But guess what? Moses been coming to us and Moses been saying this is what God said and we listened to him. Now sure, we wanted to hear from God. Now we heard from him. It's a little bit more than we expected. So we told him, Moses, 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 let's just go back to how it was. You hear God, you tell us what to say and we'll do what you tell us. Right? So we stopped my God from talking. At that moment, Moses said, alright, I'm going to go up there and holler at God, hear what he got to say. Moses went up Oh, they God, and hasn't come down. He didn't tell us how long he's going to be gone. Remember, this is one day. Next day, we hear God stopping at the Tenth Commandment. Moses goes up to hear it. So we just wait. we like, okay, Moses about to come back down and tell us the rest of the stuff that God was going to tell us. He hasn't come yet. Okay, next step. Still hasn't come. Fast forward 40 days. Hasn't come. Right? So we looking like, I ain't seen Moses take a lunch up there. You know what I'm saying? Moses ain't take no lunch. He didn't take nothing up there with him. He didn't tell how long he's going to be gone. And that was a scary mountain when he went up in there. I don't know what happened to Moses. Right? And so you look at it and you break it down, put it in context. It's not this crazy thought that they had. It's actually pretty logical. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It actually makes a little bit of sense. Right? So you look at it and it's like, Moses gone. Make us something. Right? We're used to having something. We don't want to hear from God no more. We don't want to. We don't want you to go back to God and be like, "All right, Moses, go and talk to us again." We don't want that. So make us something else. Make us an image of our God. Moses was the image before, right? So now give me a golden calf. Why right, we used to that type of stuff in Egypt? What's appropriate? Give us a golden. Never mind the fact that the Most High God just said, "Don't make an image," right? Who can make us an image? Aaron did it, right? Let's see. And Aaron said to them, Break off the golden golden earrings which are in your ears, in the ears of your wives and your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. Mm -hmm. After he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These in they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they rose he up. He said, a feast of what? The Lord. Feast of the golden calf. Feast of the Lord. Feast of this strange God. It's a feast of the Lord. And they got all capital letters? Yep. That's a feast of Yahuwah. Why did these people tell you that they're trying to worship another God? They're trying to worship the Most High. They knew who they were worshiping. They just did it wrong. It ain't no different from a Christian having a cross or praying hands or... Or a fish on the back of their car, or a dove on their Bible, and all that that crazy stuff they do is no different. On uh, on Purim, Purim, morning of Purim, 
I was over at my mom's house. And uh, me and uh, my stepdad, you know what I'm saying, he was uh, he was talking, you know what I'm saying. So uh, I just happened to, you know what I'm saying, he a Hebrew, you know what I'm saying. They make me, make my heart smile, you know what I'm saying. He called me every now and again be like, all my life I've been lied to, you know what I'm saying. I'll be telling you, we, we be chopping it up. So every time I see him, you know what I'm saying, he got a nice thick, you know what I'm saying, he wore Hebrew beard, you know what I'm saying, that thing nice too. You know what I'm saying, so I'll be looking at him, be like, my man, you know what I'm saying, let's talk. So we be chopping it up, you know what I'm saying. These people be teaching him some of this stuff, like eat him the white man. But he he understand, you know what I'm saying? It's like you speak to him, you show it to him in the book, he ride, he ride with that thing, you know what I'm saying? So it's an easy conversation. I'll be letting him know, you know what I'm saying, trying to, you know, strengthen him and everything, and just kind of hear what he got to say, because I can still learn from him too. You know what I'm saying? So uh we do we just chopping it up. We chopping it up for a good little minute. You know what I'm saying? One of the reasons I was almost late for Pure. And then this uh, you know what I'm saying, like a little Mexican dude, you know what I'm saying? He like came walking up. You know what I'm saying? Out of nowhere, just in the middle of our conversation. So at first, I'm looking like, what you been doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Grown folks talking here, but gone somewhere. But he came in, like, ah, oh, God bless y'all, God bless y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And then just stood there. So I'm like, well, we over here talking, you know what I'm saying? He's just gonna stand in the middle of our conversation. Then, uh, then, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Pops, you know what I'm saying? He like, he looked at him. He was like, you know what I'm saying? Just started talking to him, you know, introducing him and all the things like, what made you come over here? No, no, he didn't ask him. He was like, kind of just talking to him. And then I was like, what made you come over here? You know what I'm saying? He was like, I just heard y'all talking about the word. You know what I'm saying? It's that another. I was like, I appreciate that. And then, uh, then Pop looked at him, he saw the cross on his neck. So I was like, Philip, tell him about that cross. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, I was looking at him, I was like, mm, I'm saying, I ain't trying to answer that question. Yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, go ahead. I was like, I told him, I was like, man, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? He was like, no, I want to hear. I was like, oh. I was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he was like, yeah, go ahead and tell him about the cross. And so I was like, all right. So tell me about your background. Where you from? This, that, and other. Da, da, da. And so he started telling me. He was like, yeah, just got out of jail. This, that, and the other. We doing this, doing that, and the other. Da, da, da. He got to tell me. I was like, the only reason I asked you all that is because I'm going to tell you the truth. If he didn't ask me to say nothing to you about the cross, I wasn't going to say nothing to you. I don't let you go on the, my book tell me don't don't put nothing before no pigs. You know what I'm saying? That thing don't make no sense. He's like, honestly, I wasn't gonna tell you nothing. So I, I think the most I got for him, first of all, and I think the most I got for your your willingness to come over here and you want to eat here. You know what I'm saying? I don't let me tell you about that crime. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Immediately. As soon as I said it, he started to tuck that thing. I was like, don't tell it because I said it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I ain't got no book right here for me, but I want you to go home and I want you to read it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I told him, I was like, check out Deuteronomy and I want you to check out Exodus. I gave him the Ten Commandments of each. You know what I'm saying? Where it tell you about, you know what I'm saying, what you're dealing with. I was like, I want you to see it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? At that point, if you want to leave it tucked or if you want to tuck it, tuck it. Because the word said it. You know what I'm saying? There's too, too many people out here that can just tell you anything. And as quick as you just reacted, I ain't have to prove nothing to you, you will be, somebody can mislead you. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like, I'm, I'm not telling you that because it's not good to trust what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that because it's not good to trust other people and I want you to hold them to the same standard. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and check it out. I told him, call me in, call me. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You look at those things, and these Christians, all they trying to do, they trying to, you know what I'm saying? They trying to worship the Most High God. Nobody told them that they're doing it wrong. Nobody told them that, that that cross is as good as the golden calf. They read that in church, so they read about the golden calf in church. They just shake their head, all oh, those Israelites, stupid Israelites. Praise God, but they, they, got, they got the whole, they got their altar, big old cross right there. Passing behind you, talking about those oh, silly Israelites. They didn't have no faith. Now we looking like you ain't no different. Same thing. Most high God looking at it, he looking at it. Same darn thing. Right? I told you very specific. We look at it. A lot of times we look at this stuff and we be slapping our face. I can't believe if I was in the wilderness, I would have never done that. You need to stop all that line. <laughs> you got a cross right on the front of your thing right now. You're doing it. You got way more information than the Israelites had. We didn't have no information back then. We was cutting edge. We blazing the path. We making it happen. Now we got all these examples. All this stuff in the most high correcting people for idolatry back to back to back. And we still doing the same thing. Pretty up and say, no, 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 no. This is the cross that represents Yahweh sure was suffering. Jesus suffering. That was the calf that represented the God that took him out of Egypt. So, what you say? What you mean? Most of our God can't be represented with nothing made by a man. That's crazy. 
as a book. We couldn't even make an altar. If we wanted to sacrifice, what's our option, T? Get a I mean, I, just, I want some meat. In the wilderness, I want some meat. What are our options? You got to get a bunch of stones, put them together, and burn it on. Before we even get there, right? Yeah, I want some meat, right? Yes, I want some meat. I don't want a deer. I don't want to go hunt something. I want. I got a nice. I mean, I got a nice little sheep. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It. Nice little lamb. Now yeah, bring it to the priest. I got lamb right here. I want to eat it though. Okay. I don't necessarily want to do nothing religious. But I'm just hungry. You gotta bring it to the priest. I gotta bring this lamb to the priest. What's my other? Option? Priest ain't around. Dude, what I'm away on, on 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 business. Oh, you have to. Uh... We have to put it on the stone. We have to get, get the little altar together. They couldn't cut it. You have to get it some natural stones and burn it on there. I just got to put some stones, make a fire out of it, and that's my altar. What happens if I just like, mm, this one ain't fitting right. Let me take a little chisel to it, kind of break it down. What happened? It wouldn't be accepted. That thing's a sin before me. Most of our guys going to look at that and be like, that's a sin before me. I don't accept none of that food. You, you, you chiseled that? Oh, that's it. I mean, I just chiseled it. Hey, I just tried to make sure, because I wanted it to kind of fit together. I just like... I like when I can like make my fire and it come out the middle. You know what I'm saying? I just put what I need in front of it. So to do that, I just make a little hole in this rock right here. I was like, I gotta look at that. Now you, you, you messed that one all the way up. We good. You just wait. You just killed a whole bunch of time with that. You got all them pretty rock. Put a hole in one of them and killed a whole bunch of time by doing that. You want to do it? You bring it to the altar. That was made by hands. After what though? The priest. After what though? He was sanctified. But Moses did what? Moses had to sanctify the priest. So when Moses is up on the mount, 40 days, 40 nights, Most High God gave him instructions to make a, a tabernacle. Yeah. And he said he had to make it after what he saw in the Most High God's heaven. Right? So even though it was made with hands, it was made with very specific designs according to what the Most High God gave. That's our exception. Right? That's where you got to make your sacrifice. Or oh, you ain't going to do it there. You away on business, you far away, you know what I'm saying? You ain't near the camp. Okay, well, you make your altar without hands. You just put some stuff together. That's it. Don't don't you don't you chisel nothing, don't put no tool on it. Otherwise that becomes a sin for us. The most high God is very specific. And you see that and you learn his character. And you think it's okay to have a cross? You think a dove, you ask these people where the dove, the dove, it don't rep what it represents then. Why you got a dub? What's the, what's the dub mean then? No, see, it ain't, so it ain't got nothing to do, I mean, nothing. You telling me it has nothing to do with the fact that when Yahushua was baptized, the spirit descended on him like a dove. I mean, the spirit of who? Spirit of God? Oh, okay. So that's an image of the Most High God at that point. How you gonna look at it? The fish don't mean nothing, so you know, I read in the, in the ancient church father books that they used to make a fish in the sand to represent, you know what I'm saying, that, that Christians who were being hunted by the Romans, they used to have a secret code of making a fish to let them know that Christians were in that area or some foolish. I've never heard that one. I heard that one when I was in That's crazy. That, was a, that, was a, really? that was the best explanation I ever heard for it because I was like, where's this fish come from? Yeah, I never heard that one. You know what I'm saying? The, the two I heard because he fed people with the fish and that one. And I was like, I like that one better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that one better. I like that one better than, you know what I'm saying? You took the fact that people ate fish because of a miracle and you make a symbol out of it. Oh, that thing really nice. sound weird. But if you take it, it's like it has some type of historical secret meaning and it means something to Christians because this is what we used to do when things were tough. All right, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? I can see it. It's still a sin, though. <laughs> you know, you get past all that. All right, for sure. I mean, you went. I mean, it means something to y'all. You get done with it. Guess what? That thing still seen, right? Who knows where that thing came from? It could. Chances are, it could just be flat out idolatry that crept into Christianity, and they come up afterwards, come up with a good story to explain it. You know what I'm saying? It could very well be. They had other Christian images that that didn't make it because it was clear it was idolatry. The, the like the cross before the cross with the circle around it. Yeah, like, they used that. It's called a Cairo. It looks like something a, like that. Looks like a Celtic cross or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know what I'm saying? You look at that one. That, that's what they had before, right? Before the cross was all big and all that. You had the Cairo. You know what I'm saying? Which is almost a cross and look weird. Like he looks just like a cross, just like a little halo around it or something. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? You deal with that. So it's, you can tell, like, they, they knew that thing was clear idolatry. It wasn't nobody about to keep that thing around. They knew, they knew that thing didn't come from nothing from the Bible. Right? So they twisted, got rid of all the extra stuff, and just did a regular cross. Right? So it's, it's some stuff that probably just didn't make it. But you look at it, that's why it's important that we not shaking our heads and just saying stupid Israelites when we're reading this, or stupid whoever that we're reading. Stupid, even the Amorites, or even any of these people. It's important that we not just looking at it, and just because the Bible gives a judgment, we just say stupid, they should have known it was evil. No, the only reason we know it was evil, because the Bible said that was an evil report. Right, it was logical to come back and say there's giants that are three times our darn size, we're not going to win. That's a logical decision. That's not, that's, not, that's not crazy, right? It's not a stupid decision. That's logical. They're bigger than us, and it's more of them. Land looks very nice. They're bigger than us, and it's more of them. They have very high walls. We're not going to win. That's logical, right? The only thing that they had to factor into their logic is most High God already gave it to it. Most High God said that we can take it. Now, that trumps, right? Logic would say that trumps. That's the only part. But if you minus out the faith part of it, it makes sense why they did that. So now we can learn from that at that point. If we don't do, if we don't do that, we just look at all oh, stupid Israelites. We learn nothing. We don't get anything from what they're talking about. Because now we're gonna go back and we're gonna have crosses. We're gonna go back and the Most High God told us that that something is ours, and we're gonna say, you know what? I can't stop sinning. Right? It's just like these are the mistakes that we just keep making because we haven't learned. Grab for me, uh. So the things were written. Yeah, that's it. Okay. This is Romans chapter 15, verse 4. I appreciate it the most high. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right? Everything that we have written, it was written for our learning. That we can learn from it. That we can get it and be like, okay, now I got it. Right? Now I got it. Now I see where they went wrong. Let me make the corrections. Let me make sure I don't do the same thing. Right? That's why we read the Old Testament. That's why we read these things. Because it gives us an example. It gives us something that we can put and we can say, ah, somebody's made that mistake before. This is how it can be avoided. Right? I know God's character now. I know how he sees that. I see how precise he is about a, a sacrifice. Which means nothing to us. Right? We've never sacrificed. Just saying we first coming into the faith. What does sacrifice mean to you? You don't know nothing about God. you starting to learn about God. They tell you there's a God. He created the world. Six days, seven days. He rested. All that's great. What does sacrifice mean to you at that point? Nothing. Right? You're I mean, like, sacrifice? What's the big deal? You're killing the animal. Ooh, okay, whatever. Right? And then you start learning. This sacrifice that means nothing to you. Oh, he ain't getting people butt about that. He said, you can't even, I mean, you can't even pick a tool to your altar. That's how serious it was. You start to learn. Something that small be that serious about? And to us, you know what I'm saying? To us, at that point, it's small. Then you start to learn, maybe it's not that small to him. Right? That's what we get from the from, from the scriptures. That's what we get from, from the New Testament, from the writings. Right? We can start to understand what the man is looking for, what he expects from us, what can we can, can we learn from him. Where were we? Mm-hmm. We're probably at uh, Exodus 32. Oh, yeah. You want to go back there? Yeah. All right, so they made the golden calf. Skip on down. I don't know where you left off, but skip on down to like verse 15. You're probably already there. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. Mm-hmm. The tables were written on both their sides, one on one, the one side and one on the other were they written. Mm-hmm. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, 
there is noise of war in the camp. Mm -hmm. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, mm -hmm. but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and brake them beneath the mount. Mm -hmm. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water. And what he do? And made the children of Israel drink of it. Yeah, drink it. Boys, what's wrong with y'all? Keep going. And Moses said unto I Aaron. Moses. You look at Moses, man. Moses wasn't playing. And at the same time, he still stood in the gap for these people every time. He look at our people. He is hard on our people. He is hard on them. But at the same time, he always stood in the gap for us. We're going to keep reading. Why? And Moses said unto Aaron, what did this people... Uh, what did what did this people unto thee that you have brought so great a sin upon them? Mm -hmm. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Mm -hmm. And I said unto them, Whatsoever has any gold, whosoever has any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the, the people were happened. naked. You know what I'm saying? I put it in the fire. The calf just happened. Yeah, okay, Aaron. <laughs> and when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, mm -hmm. then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the who sons came? of who came? and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel: uh -huh. Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from the gate, from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Uh -huh. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. All right, keep going. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to he the said, Lord. He said what? Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord. He said, Set yourself apart today. Right? You set yourself apart to the Lord today. Let's see. <laughs> Even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. He said, And then this day, he going to bestow upon you a blessing. Right? Guess who would have been a part of this group? Firstborn. Korah. Right? Oh, yeah. So you have to understand what Cora's perspective is. Cora's perspective is, I'm part of this thing. I'm blessed just like the rest of y'all blessed. That's why he cool. That's why he can lead this charge. He feeling like, let me get some boys with me. You know what I'm saying? I say all y'all can do it. I say all of us. The Lord is close to all of us. I say all of us is holy. Right? I say we all go and let holler at Moses. I'll talk it. I'll do the talking. I'm just like him. I'm of Kohath. I stood with Moses when he said who was on his side. And he said the Lord going he to bestow on us a blessing. I'm right here. Right? So let's go back. We can start back at verse 1. It's Numbers chapter uh, 16, verse 1. <coughs> I love this thing. We can learn so much just from how Korah react. Because if you look, me, I like to look at what they were looking at. I like to try to understand, like, what in the world? Because sometimes you read this stuff, you're like, what in the world? What make you do something crazy like that? You're going to talk to Moses like you lost your never mind. But then when you take about it, you try to start putting everything in context. Be like, oh, no, I probably would have did the same stuff. My stupid self. I probably would have did the same exact thing. I probably would have looked at it, got to, like, I don't see what this. Because it, it's details. It's right. You look at it and be like, I'm from Kohath. I'm a Levite. I was there when everything was going down. Most High God spoke to all of us. He said we are peculiar people. Like, I'm listening. I believe God when they say that. You know, a lot of other stuff God said too. You know what I'm saying? You ain't paying attention to, but the part that you like, like, I believe God. We don't do that today. We don't have this whole book full of God's words, but the part that we like, we be like, oh, this is what God said. John 3.16. In the whole other parts that we may not like so much that'll provide a lot more context, but we skip right over that thing. That thing ain't even in the book for us. Like 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. Alright? St. John chapter 3, verse 16. Good. 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. I don't know about that. Right? Same book. 
Same book. Same person writing it. Same message from the Most High God. One of them feel a little bit better, though. All right? One of them I can work with. The other one, that thing made me feel a little uneasy. All right? Keep going. Watch this. This is Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. I just want us to understand the context. When Corey walking up, I always wanted, like, what gave him the audacity? Uh, that's what gave it to him. He's looking at everything. He analyzed. He's looking like, I don't see why I can't do it. Right? And then think about think about what just happened before that. Right? What just happened before that? We was in the wilderness. We sent 12 up there. Right? They go. They come back with some bad news. All of a sudden, people start dropping dead. Nobody, remember, we don't hear from God. Guess what we see? Moses and Aaron. Right? So you know if you start thinking at that point, these your family members, friends dropping dead, we not being led properly. You try to be just circling, obviously you not, I mean you're not being led properly. That's just how it go, right? So now he coming up, he's like, man, I think we just y'all take too much in this side. Right? You take a little bit too much in this side. Let's see, keep going. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. All right? So you had, you had a Reubenite there, and who was the other one? Uh, Korath. It was Korath, but it was uh, Abiram, right? Dathan and Abiram, and the sons of Eliab, and On, and the sons of Peleth, sons of Reuben. Oh, okay. All right? Keep going. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, mm -hmm. famous in the congregation, men of renown. Mm -hmm. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Look at Moses. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, mm -hmm. and will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he has chosen. He will he cause, cause him to, to come, come where? Him, come near unto him. Very important that we remember that. <laughs> even him whom he has chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Mm -hmm. This do, take your censers, Korah, and all, this, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord does choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Moses said, I ain't about to hear him be doing a whole bunch of arguing. All right? We'll prove this thing out with the Most High God himself. You go ahead and take you a couple senses. When you take your senses, we're going to let the Most High God choose out who's, uh, who's holy and who's not. He going he gonna to call the one, and they're going to come near the ones who we choose, they're going to come near. Right? Then Moses left off. He's like, no, y'all take too much on y'all stuff. Y'all doing too much. Right? Keep going. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seems it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? Right? He told Corey, he's like, that's not enough for you? Right? You you think that small the most high God gave you that? You think you think you need more? He's like, don't you, you don't appreciate what the most high God did? You think this is like, you think this is nothing? You think you're doing runt work? I'm telling you, our people got the same mindset now. The book tell us that the Gentiles are gonna be our servants in the end. Right? Well, the, the Levites were service, uh, were service to the uh, priests, right? And now when we talk about the Gentile being service to us, this is the attitude that we talk about it. Like it's grunt work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're going to be our slaves. As if they're going to be slaves to us like we were slaves to them. You ain't lost your darn mind, right? Because we don't have the right mind. We're thinking about this stuff like, like they think about Gentiles, servitude and all that. You know the most high God don't do no service. You know our law. How do you know our law? No, they don't know our law. That's the, that's the problem. But if you know the law, how do you imagine in your mind we're going to have slaves like they made us slaves? That's not going to happen. You know our law. Right? That's the 
reason why we went back and we try to go through all this stuff because it's a lot of our people that think they know the law just because they read the Ten Commandments. Right? They read Leviticus, uh, what was it, 11? They read Leviticus 11, like, learn what you can and can't eat. Now they scholars of the law. Right? They read they read Deuteronomy 28 and they just know they eat. They 100% connected to the culture. But you got to cut that stuff. It, it's important for us to go back. Let's look. Let's audit. Let's get rid of stuff. Let, let's keep the stuff that need to be there. Let's get rid of what else ain't. That way we can make some decisions. We can do stuff. All right? But if we're looking at stuff wrong, we fall into these same traps. Cora looking at this like, I'm doing the wrong work. Hey, wrong work, boy. Is it small to you? Keep going. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also? He said, you want to do the priesthood as well? All right. Keep going. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? He's like, wait, what Aaron even got to do with this? You think Aaron chose to be a priest? No, the most high God chose him. Grab, uh, Grab uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Give me verse 9. I'm sorry, but we make this mistake today. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, mm -hmm. with shame face, shamefacedness, mm -hmm. and sobriety, mm -hmm. not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, mm -hmm. but which becomes women professing godliness with good works. Mm -hmm. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Mm -hmm. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Mm -hmm. For Adam was first formed, then For Eve. Adam was first born, and then you. Then Eve. And Adam, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay, then, then Adam was, wasn't deceived, but the woman was deceived in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So you keep obeying the word, you're going to be saved through childbearing. Right? You know what some women will look at when they see that? Childbearing. That's sexist. Right? You know how the most high God looking at it? Is that small to you? Right? Is that, is that, I mean, is this a small thing? Just like he said to Cora, is this a small thing to you? Do you think this is runt work? Grab, um, grab 1 Corinthians 15, 13, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Or is it 11? What are you talking about? 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The commandments that I speak. No, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, then we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 14. 11, that's the, the supper, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's 1 oh, okay. Corinthians chapter 11, verse... Uh, 10. I think I'm on 12, but start at 10. Okay. Yeah. For this cause ought the woman have power on her head because of the angels. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Neither, neither is the man without the woman. Watch this. Nor the woman without the man. Nor is the woman without the man. Why? In the Lord. Uh huh. For as the woman is of the man, even For so, as the woman is of the man, what does he mean by that? Eve was taken out of Adam. Eve came from Adam. Right? Adam was laying there, most high God put him to sleep, took one out of his ribs out, and then from that rib made Eve. So as the woman came from man, when woman he's talking about Eve specifically there, watch this. Even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. How is the man from the woman? Because the woman bears child. Every man on this earth today 
came from a woman. So now he, he set it up. He's like, he's letting you know the very first woman came from a man. But don't get that thing twisted because every man going to come from a woman. Period. So now you look at it and be like, oh, this is a small thing. Right? A woman, I can't preach. What the woman going to say? I'm saved just like the man is saved. Right? God talked to me just like he talked to the man. Right? Why I can't preach? I know the Bible just like this man know the Bible. Just like Cora. He just, she ain't running down. She's looking at it. This don't make no sense. I can put words. I speak better than my husband. There's a lot of women out here. I speak better than my, my husband can't speak. I speak better than I know the Bible better than my husband. Tell me why I can't teach him the word. Tell me why I can't. Tell me, tell me why I can't get in front of the church and talk. Why does he have to be the only pastor? I'm eloquent. I be teaching these women all the time and I have success. Just let me teach the men. Way more people will be saved. This can further God's plan. They look at all this stuff and they look like, I can do these things. Just like Cora. What was Cora thinking about? Cora looking like, oh, we can get the thing together. All these people just died. Oh, we can clean all this stuff up. We just need better leadership. Right? Moses, you take too much on yourself. Right? Then, then the woman, she go to the pastor. She's like, I can be a pastor. Just let me help out. I can be a pastor. I can be a minister. Right? Most like God, like, no, sit your butt down. You're all right. You can be saved through childbirth as long as you continue to obey the word. Right? She looked at that like, no, that's a small thing. Childbirth. I don't even want kids. All right? You look at it, but if you look at what he's talking about, he's saying there's going to be a man who, who's going to lead to salvation, who's going to teach. And that man who's going to teach, guess where we came from? He gonna come from a woman. You obey the word, y'all just keep having children. Right. It's gonna be a man that come along, and he gonna teach the word. If it wasn't for you, this great man wouldn't have been here. That's it. Give birth to a great man, or don't. You ain't gotta give birth, but don't. Just to keep on obeying the word. But women will be saved through childbirth. Period. Because there's gonna be a man that comes from their childbirth that they reared up, that they raised, that they nurtured, that they kept alive, that they the ones who gave a, a great example to. And then that man then is going to lead the world in the salvation. Where do you think Yahushua came from? No, he came from Mary. He ain't had no man. Most like God said, I don't know, man touching this? Guess who we wanted to touch it, though? Y'all think that's a small thing? That's crazy. Right? But the world will trick us into thinking, oh, that's just sexist. Shut up. You don't know what you darn talking about. That's one of the most important things. You mean the son of the most high God had no man touching him? But guess what he did have touched? He came from a woman. How you gonna stop that? How is that a small thing? He ain't got no earthly father. Guess what he do got though? Earthly mother. Because they ain't gonna be saved through childbirth. That's book. We look at this thing. Like, no, nah, he pastor taking too much on himself. No, woman, you taking too much on your own self. Just relax. Calm down. Work in what God gave you. It don't matter what you think you can do or what you think you qualified to do. It's about obedience. This is what the Most High said, God said, do. Grab a, grab a 1 Corinthians 14 now. This 1 Corinthians chapter 14, give me verse 27. I must say 21, so 21 might be what I want, but 27, that seems too high up. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two. No, I don't want that. Grab uh, 27 too high up. Go up. Grab 37. This 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet uh -huh. or spiritual... Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Right there on point. Moses, I mean not Moses, uh, Paul is the one who told us that. Right? He said, man, let, look, you might think of yourself spiritual. You might think you a darn prophet. Right? So if that's the case, let him acknowledge that this is coming from the Most High God. You know, in other words, he's saying... If you think you're spiritual and you don't acknowledge that this is coming from the Most High God, you ain't spiritual. Right? He said, this is commandment that I'm giving you. Keep going. Uh, 
But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Mm -hmm. Let all things be done decently and in order. Mm -hmm. That's it. Grab a... Uh, what verse is that? 40. That was the last verse. 40? Give me... Um, where you started? 37? Yeah. Give me 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, uh -huh. but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. That's it. As also says the law. What he's referring to is what we're reading in Genesis. Right? This is what was given to us. It's not about woman under man, this, that, and other. Most like God ain't thinking about that stuff from the way we're thinking about it. He's thinking about the order that he set up from Genesis. I made it this way. I say a woman will desire to be ruled by her man. Period. To keep with that order in the congregation, a man is going to teach and a woman is not. Period. That's it. It ain't nothing about how we thinking about stuff. It That's the order. Stick with it. You can think, I mean, if you just think about it, does, does Cora have the muscles that it takes to lift the lamb and to chop it up? Yes, of course. Right? Does Cora have the intelligence that it takes to lift a lamb and to chop it up? Yes, of course. Right? None of the physical attributes of Cora would keep him from doing what a priest does. It has nothing to do with that. It has what to do with one thing. Most High God said, you got to be a son of Aaron. Is Cora a son of Aaron? No. Could he physically do everything that a son of Aaron does? Sure. Absolutely. It would just be a sin. Could a woman physically do everything that a man does? In a lot of cases, yes. Right? In terms of preaching and teaching and all that, yes. It would just be out of order for her. Right? That's what we have to kind of get through our brain. Get away from what could and might and all that. Let's get to what how does God want it to be. Period. Otherwise, you get caught up in what the world is telling you, what is fair and unfair and all that, and you end up just like court. Grab that. Where we leave off? Numbers uh, 16. 16, 11. 16, 11? Yeah. Come on down. Oh, y'all can give me, give me 11. Go ahead. It's Numbers chapter 16, verse 11. I don't know what we're going to skip past. So. Numbers 16, 11. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that you murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land of, out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Mm -hmm. Moreover, you have not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. All right? So they're looking at it like you just told us that we're going to be stuck in this wilderness and we're going to die. Right? Remember, this is what they're coming off of the back of. They thought we're going into the wilderness. They did get a message that, oh, on second thought, everybody who's 20 and above, who was numbered, all y'all going to die in the wilderness. We're going to be here 40 years. This is what the Most High God just told us. Right? So he's looking like, Oh, that don't make no sense. We need some more leadership. Most you said you're going to bring us into a land filled flowing with milk and honey, and you have not. Right? They're disagreeing with what's going on. We don't believe this. Why are you the only one that can talk to God? All of a sudden now, all of us going to die? I don't believe that. Moses, you taking too much on yourself. Remember, this is how this stuff came about. Watch it. Keep going. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not their offerings. I have not taken one donkey from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, you and they and Aaron, tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou also, and Aaron each of you his censer. 
And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. All right, so all the men came up. And they all had a censer, which is pretty much just burning. You know what I'm saying? They put incense inside of their censer. All right? They're getting this thing ready. They're ready. They about ready for the Most High God to choose. So Aaron and his son and all the other people that was with Korah. Right, everybody putting it all together, and we 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 about to figure this thing out right now. All right, keep going. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, uh -huh. and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses and and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Mm -hmm. And they fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, mm -hmm. shall one man sin, and will you be wroth with all the congregation? Uh huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about these, from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up, went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. Mm -hmm. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of the tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. Moses said, Oh, this is going to prove it out that the Most High God sent me to do this work. What are you going to do, Moses? For I have not done them of mine own mind. Uh huh. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. If these people, if a heart attack, if he died from a dark heart attack, most I got ain't sent me. If he just died just because of old age, most I got ain't sent me. I mean, if if he get bit by a darn snake, the most I got haven't sent me, right? He said all that stuff is common. That happens. You know what I'm saying? He said if anything happened, if these men died from anything common, you know the most I got haven't sent me. Watch this. But if the Lord make a new thing in the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertains unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder and was under them. Mm -hmm. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods. Mm -hmm. They and all that appertained unto them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed up, closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. Their families too. And all Israel that was round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, "Let lest the earth swallow us up also." All right, everybody ran. They're like, "Man, the earth might mess around, swallow us up too." What verse is that? Thirty-four. Keep going. And there came out fire from the Lord and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. All right. So you remember he said, I'm going to bring y'all near to them. All right? He's like, the ones that's chosen, I'm going to bring them near. You know what happens when you get near to God? And you ain't right? Consumed. Nobody going to get God. You got to be clean. Got to be purged. That fire going to clean it all up. Got to be clean. Grab a, grab a Malachi. He said, that sensor was burning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that sensor had to get burned. So I'm going to burn now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is Malachi chapter they 2. They killed 9.999% of the germs. <laughs> you have to get all that, all that, all them germs out. Yeah, buddy. This is Malachi, uh, Malachi chapter 3, actually. It's Malachi chapter 3. You know, like, a couple verses after that, they came back to him and was like, You killed the people of the Lord. Oh, yeah, we're going to get it. Malachi 3. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? Uh -huh. for, he is, for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Uh-oh, watch and he, this. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. 
and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. All right, whenever you purify and you purge, what does that mean? You got to clean it. Just like what he just said. 99.999. That thing, you got to kill something. Something dying. All right, when you purify, all right, you take some. what's going to happen to the part that's not pure? I mean, you take it some. It got some impurities and it got some purities in it, right? But you want to purify, so that means you want to remove all impurities. What's going to happen to the impurities? Disappear. That thing got to go, right? That was the most high God talking about. He's like, oh no, I'm gonna purify. He said it's gonna stay like a refiner fire. You know, they take silver. You know what I'm saying? They take some silver, some gold about the ground. Got all types of stuff in it. You know what I'm saying? So you know what you got to do? Melt that thing down. Because you know, I mean, everything else that's with it, it's going to melt at a, a lower temperature. You know what I'm saying? Or burn up at a lower temperature. So I, I put that fire on that thing, melt that thing down, then it'll separate everything. So you can keep that. I want all the gold. I want all the silver. Right? He said, man, I'm like a finest fire. Some, some stuff is about to get lit up. Some people are going to make it. It's, it might be a little, you know, uncomfortable. Some people are going to make it, though. Let's see. Why would he say that? Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. Mm -hmm. And I will come near to you. And I will come where? Near to you. Uh oh, he near. So what does that mean? You gotta be clean. Let's see. Come near to you to judgment. Uh huh. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages. All right? He said, I will be a swift witness. What does that mean? You're going to judge. Fast. Mm -hmm. Quick. All right? He said, as soon as that thing happened, I'm, you know why? Because he's near. He in the camp. He in the wooden. He's near. When the ones I got to step back, that give us opportunity. All right? When he's far from us, that give us opportunity. Grab uh, Ecclesiastes. Then we're going to grab Acts. But grab Ecclesiastes chapter 11. That's why they was getting God so fast in the wilderness. His, his tabernacle was right there. Because he was near. He was there. Most of God get near that thing. That thing totally different. You don't think they're sending in Egypt? Yeah, these folks were sending in Egypt. They didn't have nothing to do with God at first. You get brought into the wilderness. Oh, I'm near now. All right? I'm near now. Now I swift, I'm a swift witness. You seeing I'm getting your butt. As soon as you do it. All right? This is, uh, this is, uh, what is this? Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 10. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 10. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. This is chapter 11, verse 10? Yeah. Keep going. That's the end of the chapter. Um, let me... What am I trying to think of there? Mm, the whole duty of man. What's the last, what's the last chapter? 12. That's 11? Alright, give me 10, maybe. 10. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge. 10, 13. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talks mischievous and madness. Try 8. Give me 8, 10. 8, 10? Yeah. Please, yeah, please, 8, 10. And so I saw the wicked buried who had come. That's what I was Okay. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 10. And, and so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. 
Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. He said what? Sentence against an evil work is not what? Executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right? He said when the Most High God don't execute judgment or anybody don't execute judgment fast, people will mess around and start feeling like they can do evil. Right? Why do you think the Most High God back up? Let me see who y'all really are. Right? Let me just see. Right? Once the most I got backed up, people start feeling like, oh, okay, I can get away with this. I can do what I want to do now. Right? Because nobody, nothing's happening to nobody. That's how we feel right now. That's why people feel like, well, how do you know what you believe is right? What I believe is right. I know God for myself. Right? Because people feel like they can do whatever they want at this point. <laughs> right? I make up my own darn God. Who's going to tell me not to? Ain't nothing going to happen to me. You got people talking about, you know, they think Lucifer is the devil, so they're just giddy him. Right? So they sitting there talking about Lucifer, Lucifer, 666, and all this crazy stuff. Because they think they, 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 you know, they think they're doing something. Ain't nothing going to happen to me. That's their mindset. Right? Most like God back up. You know what I'm saying? People just start feeling like, that's how you can know. It's like, okay, I can make it clear. Even when I'm stepping back, these are the ones that still obey my word. Right? Then after that, he get real close. Then it's now a swift judge. He said, I'm a swift witness to all the sorcerers. To the darn liars. To everybody. I'm a swift witness to these people. Right? That get everybody else's butt. Grab, um. Uh, give me Acts chapter 16, is it? Acts 17, actually. You're a sorcerer? No, no, no. That's, uh, let me talk to the Gentiles. This is Acts chapter 17, verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Mars' hill, in the midst of Mars' hill, and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Mm -hmm. You are too superstitious. You are also superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your dev devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. Uh-huh. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Mm -hmm. Neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he give, he given, he giveth to all life, and breathes in all things, uh -huh. and breath in all things. And has made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Right? That's a book. Right? Remember that dude you were telling me, you told me that guy that was telling you, you know what I'm saying, we all from Adam. You're right, trying to use that as a point. Most of God, that's that's true. <laughs> you right? Most of God acknowledged that he made from one blood all men. It don't change the fact that he separated the Israelites from the Gentiles. Right? He acknowledged that. Now, that's from God. He acknowledged it. He made us all from one man. No dispute there. Don't change the fact that we separated into different people. Right? Keep going. Yeah, that dude, you know, he don't identify with no white folks and Asians. He just, yeah, he be running the dark now. Yeah. We're all one. I was like, yeah, okay. They feel like they can do whatever they want to do. God ain't there. Well, y'all better be careful. You want God to come near. You know what running your mouth. You want him to come near, okay. You will be a swift witness. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. Mm -hmm. Neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gives life, give, give to all life and breathe in all things. Mm -hmm. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation, mm -hmm. that they should seek the Lord and haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Uh -huh. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, uh -huh. for we are also his offspring. Uh -huh. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Mm -hmm. And the times of the at the and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. He said, "Everywhere, you gotta repent. All men, 
everywhere got to repent. He said, there was a time the Most High God winked at. Right? There was a time he winked at that stuff. He was like, eh. Right? He was like, now, he tell everybody everywhere to repent. Because he trying to let you know, I'm about to get real close. I ain't that far now, but I'm about to get real close after this. Right? He's trying to prepare. He's trying to let us know what we're doing with. Right? It's very important that we understand the dynamics of God and what he's trying to do in his plan. And the only way we get that is just by understanding his character. How did he deal with us before? That's not going to change, right? The way he's dealing with stuff, the dynamics, the character, right? Oh, that, that, we have to use that like a key, you know, like you have a map, you know what I'm saying? That is like the map be having all these different little symbols on it. And you're like, what does that symbol mean? The map is always going to have like a little key at the bottom. It's like, this symbol means this. This is the distance, and this, that, and other. All that, all that stuff going to be at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? You got to use that. When we read in the book, we got to develop a little key. Like, this is what the Most High God is. Like, this is how he operates. When he says this, this is what he means. You know what I'm saying? This is how it works. This is what he's expecting from us. Then we can navigate. You know what I'm saying? Then we can look at this and be like, okay, I know how the Most High God is operating. You know what I'm saying? That thing becomes second nature for us. It becomes easy. We don't do that, man. We out here, we out here taking guesses. We're not dealing with something we can afford to make a wrong guess. All right? We have to be operating off of facts. All right? You can see that everything the Most High God is saying is very precise. All right? He's saying stuff to these people, and they're taking like a couple facts, and they leave one out, and each of their whole plan is off. All right? Corey looking at it. Well, we going to die in the wilderness according to you. I'm holy just like you are. The Most High God is amongst all of us. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a Levite, and he separated me just like he separated you. Mm, let's do it. You know what he didn't consider? He already told you, but only Aaron. Right? You didn't consider that. Or you considered it, and you thought it was small. Right? That's what we have to do. We have to be able to open up the book, get everything, and be like, okay, all this applies. You can't take one but up. All right? Any questions? Next week, we're going to... Uh, we're going to try to pick up and we're going to finish off uh, Acts, or not Acts, uh, finish off number 16 uh, and talk about what, what, T Lee, uh, what T alluded to, you know what I'm saying, talking about how the word, you know what I'm saying, the word got to, to the rest of the people that these people just got you know, got killed, and the people look at it, they like, you just killed the men of God. So it wasn't enough for everybody, you know what I'm saying? So the most I got to do another one, kill a couple more folk, you know what I'm saying? But he going to prove out exactly how it plays out, and he's going to give us something that we could keep, you know what I'm saying, something that we can have as a testimony, you know what I'm saying, that that that, that Aaron is the one that's going to hold things out. So, you know, and, uh, we'll kind of look at, you know what I'm saying, some of the other perils that we went through after that. Let's go ahead and pray out.